Hello, this is Colleen Shoemaker with the League of Women Voters of Portland, and you are watching the Video Voters Guide. We, in conjunction with Metro East Community Media, are here to talk with candidates running in the May 2020 primary election. With me today is Maxine Dexter, running for State Representative Dix District 33. Welcome, Maxine. Thank you. Please tell us a little about yourself and why you are running for this office. As you just said, I am Dr. Maxine Dexter and I'm running for Oregon State Representative in this district because I want to use my voice and my experience to make a broader impact on the health and the safety of Oregonians. I want to make sure every Oregonian has the same shot that I got in life. I grew up in a working class family and am the first and only person in my family to graduate from college. The support and resilience of my community helped empower me to achieve my dreams through hard work and dedication. Such resilience and support is much harder to find in working communities today. In my job as a doctor, I see every day how people are struggling, hardworking people doing all they can to take care of themselves and their families, and still they can't get to a place of stability. We must change that. Everyone deserves an equitable chance at success in life. I'm dedicated to making an impact as a champion for the marginalized communities across our state, as we are seeing now with the COVID-19 pandemic. Everyone's health and safety is at risk when we don't adequately care for and support various communities throughout our state. I will bring my frontline knowledge of the issues with our healthcare and social support systems and apply them at the state level with the goal to make life a bit better for everyone, especially our most vulnerable Oregonians. Thank you. Thank you. So what challenges have been and will be created by the pandemic to the effective and efficient administration of Oregon state government? And how do you propose to meet those challenges? The novel coronavirus pandemic has highlighted enormous weaknesses in our social infrastructure and healthcare policies in a way that has absolutely proven my belief that we need healthcare leaders in the legislature and that our healthcare system needs to be overhauled. We have, a, we have significant work to do to make sure our response to such a threat in the future can be effective, organized, and compassionate. We are seeing very clearly there is tremendous opportunity for improvement, and I will be happy to help lead towards a more resilient future in the state in this regard. So where could we do things better in the future? One, our elected leaders at the state level were fatally distracted by the Republican walkout and their unified focus at the top, or <laughs> their unified focus on the cap and invest bill, sorry. Elected leaders must be able to maintain a high level perspective and be able to shift focus when needed. We needed to prioritize legislating over politics, and we will need to do that from here on out. Walkouts and deep partisan politics as it stands currently must come to an end. Two, public health policy needs to be prioritized. We should develop clear early warning systems that trigger a statewide response, as ours has not been as well coordinated with some counties responding differently than others. We need pr clear protocols for levels of accountability and authority at the state and more local levels of government in a crisis. Three, healthcare reform must happen in 2021 period. This pandemic has highlighted with painful clarity that our ability to effectively and rapidly respond to public health threats is a deep, has deep limitation in a fragmented system as we have today. We must have a coordinated single payer plan to be able to coordinate everything from a state level um, perspective. And that will require federal level um, waivers as well. And I'm actively working to help make that happen. Thank you. Traditionally, the legislature has conducted the decennial redistricting process, which will occur next year. Are you comfortable with the current redistricting process? And if not, how would you seek to change it? I am not comfortable with the current redistricting, redistricting process. I strongly support the push for independent redistricting commissions. The core of a healthy democracy is the notion of fairness, one person, one vote. Partisan gerrymandering only works to strip fairness from our democracy. At the end of the day, voters need to pick their representatives, not the other way around. And I hope to see these initiatives on the November ballot. 
I absolutely support the intent to improve our current process to be one that is objective, independent, and fair. What are your thoughts on cap and trade proposals intended to mitigate climate change? Are they a good idea or not, and why? I support the intention behind the cap and trade proposal staunchly. We must do everything in our power to mitigate the impacts of climate change, and we must do it quickly. I do have some concerns about it, however, after reading more about California's implementation. I believe a cap and trade program can work to help reduce our carbon emissions, but we cannot follow in the footsteps of our neighbors to the south. While I support the legislation in the 2020 session, I believe that a future version must include, one, protections for our marginalized communities, two, regional and local autonomy to set stricter regulations when desired, three, streamline state financing for green energy, green transportation, and green agriculture, four, stricter regulations for oil, gas, and coal companies operating in or through Oregon, and finally, measures to prevent extensive carbon banking. What is your view of the suggestion that the legislature suspend collecting the taxes that will fund the 2019 Student Success Act? I do not support any proposal that will suspend collecting these taxes. Our state's budget will be depleted and strained in 2021 to an unprecedented degree due to the dramatic economic impacts of this COVID-19 pandemic. Our education system will need the robust funding to an even greater degree as a result of the loss of instruction time in 2020 and the social and emotional toll this will take from schools that have already taken on some of the highest need students. This time underlines and exacerbates the inequities in our public school system. The corporate activities tax, one billion per year through half a percent of an Oregon's wealthiest business paying um, tax on gross receipts must be collected and cannot, and they are not retroactive. So those companies that don't emerge from this pandemic in an economically strong way will not be paying those taxes. There must be a need to accommodate some exceptions um, to the taxation, perhaps, depending on longer term impacts of the economy, allowing for reinvestment in worker supports. However, that is a slippery slope and on principle, I'm hesitant to open the door for more exceptions that are already, than are already in place. Businesses benefit from a well-educated public and it must be a top priority for our state to stand by our commitment to improve upon our current investment and prioritize education. Well, thank you very much. And we have about a minute left. Is there anything else that you would like to share? I just would share how proud I am as a healthcare provider of how Oregonians have risen to the occasion in this pandemic. My neighbors and people across the state have taken very seriously the requests that our governor and our governments have um, made on our lives. And so thank you um, for everything that each and every one of you are doing to support not only your healthcare frontline um, care providers, but each and every person in the state who will be healthier as a result of your actions. Well, thank you very much. It's my pleasure. This has been the Video Voter's Guide and thank you for watching. The primary election is Tuesday, May 19th. Be sure to inform yourself about the candidates and the ballot measures and exercise your right to vote.